Missing mother of five, her estranged husband, the prime suspect, he took his own, his own life. A body is never found and justice never served. Yeah, we're talking about the Jennifer Dulo's disappearance in Connecticut, a story that we have followed extensively here on PIX11. New development to tell you about in the case of a missing mother of five from Connecticut. Sources saying police made a chilling discovery at her home, leading them to believe that she may have been the victim of a violent crime. Yeah, Jennifer Dulos' husband, Fotis Dulos, and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, are both due to appear here in Norwalk Superior Court at 10 a.m. They are right now both in jail, each being held on a $500,000 bond charged with evidence tampering and hindering prosecution. Oh, in an interview with Dateline NBC, Fotis Dulos didn't answer every question but he did say he believes his wife is still alive and says he feels hurt about what is happening. Fotis Dulis, as well as his ex-girlfriend, are expected to be back here at Stanford Court today. Once that bond is posted, if they're able to do so today, uh, the judge would then order them fit with an ankle monitor to make sure that they don't leave the state. Uncharted legal territory in Connecticut. Murder suspect Fotis Dulos dead, and the body of his estranged wife, Jennifer, has never been found. Well, this weekend, the details of that case will be retold in a Lifetime movie, Gone Mom, The Disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. The drama will be followed by the documentary Beyond the Headlines, The Jennifer Dulos Story. Yeah, here to explain more about both projects is legal analyst and author Dan Abrams. He serves as executive producer. Welcome back, Dan. Good to see you. Thanks. Good to be with you. Well, as you've seen, as you know very well, we've covered this story. Local stations have covered it. National News has covered it. Um, and I think what we're still waiting to hear is some answers to this big mystery because they have never found her body. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't know that uh, they're going to be answers, so to speak. But I will tell you that one thing I think that the, uh, the Lifetime film does is it brings you inside. Uh, those of us who covered these stories, right, have been watching it from the outside. Um, we obviously come in after the fact, mm -hmm. and we try and put the pieces together. And while this is, while this is, you know, obviously very much based on the facts of what happened, we don't know exactly what happened in conversations uh, between them, et cetera. And you know, in this film, Gone Mom, we use everything we know about their relationship to try to recreate. Uh, what those conversations uh, would have been like. And gosh, being inside that house um, does sort of bring you into it in a different mm -hmm. way um, and make you sort of feel viscerally about the story yeah. in a different way. And so I, I say this as someone like you guys who's been a journalist covering it from the outside, that I think there's something unique about both the dramatized version mm -hmm. that'll be on uh, from 8 to 10 on Lifetime on Saturday and then followed by the documentary at 10 o'clock, uh, which brings you through sort of the what actually happened yeah. in the story, which is what we've all been covering quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, I think people have been fascinated by this story every step of the way. So why now, Dan? Why why tell the story now on the big screen? Yeah, well, I, look, I think that, you know, some people say, is it too soon? Someone asked me that recently. And my response is absolutely not. That the way to get change, right? And, you know, there's there is real issues about domestic violence. There is a law uh, that is passed uh, about Jennifer's law, specifically mm -hmm. related to the holes uh, that existed in the law uh, before this case happened. And so I think that uh, now is the time to try to capitalize on that, to try to remind people of this story, to try to seek changes, to avoid some of the gaps mm -hmm. in the law, for example. Um, that, you know, there didn't need to, there had to have been physical violence, right, in order to get, you know, some sort of action. Um, and moving away from just physical domestic abuse. Um, and, and I think that that's important stuff. It's absolutely yeah. important, especially now during a pandemic. We saw the numbers of domestic violence go up while a lot of folks were being quarantined with, you know, possibly their abuser. So when you look at this documentary, when we look at the work that you, you're doing here, um, who did you talk to, uh, to to get the background information? So for the documentary portion, we talked to uh, a lot of her friends, um, to Jennifer Dulos's friends. And obviously these are people who knew photos um, mm, yeah. as well. And I, I think that that really um, helped bring the story to life. And sort of, you know, what's interesting is in the dramatized version, we tell the story through a friend who becomes, you know, kind of the narrator mm -hmm. of it. And so we you know, somewhat mirror that in the documentary 
by talking to you know, the actual people uh, who knew her about what she was like, what she was thinking, how she felt about uh, FOTUS, um, different points in the story, uh, et cetera. Is there anything new, a new nugget maybe, give us a little sneak peek from the documentary that you learned along the journey here? You know, I think it was, it was listening to some of the friends talk about their impressions of both FOTUS and Jennifer's relationship, yeah. as well as some aspects about FOTUS that I was a little bit surprised to hear. Um, so I, I think that I think that will be interesting, even to people who've been following uh, this case very closely. Mm. So this wasn't an instance of maybe a freak accident or something like that. It, like what I'm gathering from you know this conversation with you is maybe this, there was domestic violence that continued over a course of, of a period of time. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm going to now you know step out of the the role for a moment as the executive producer of the show and just tell you that as a journalist who covered this story. You know, it is very hard to believe that anyone but FOTUS um, could have been responsible for this. Now, mm -hmm. the question of Michelle Traconis, his right. girlfriend, and what her responsibility may yeah. have been or not been is a separate question. But the notion and, you know, FOTUS Dulos maintained his innocence until his death, right? right. Um, but to believe that is to really have to discount an enormous amount of video, physical, um, and other evidence in this case. Hmm. And, you know, we're never going to get a definitive answer on that. We will with regard to the trial of Michelle Traconis. And yeah. look, if Michelle Traconis is convicted, that clearly means a jury believes Fotis Dulos did it. Hmm. Right, right. Hey, right Dan, time. we're simply out of time here, but this is fascinating. Can't wait to see it. Thank you for coming on to talk about this. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Uh, his films, Gone Mom, The Disappearance of Jennifer Dulos, and the documentary that he talked about, Beyond the Headlines, Jennifer Dulos' story, both premiere this Saturday night on Lifetime.